today. I would like to thank our sponsor, Honest Day Blog Homes. Honest Day Blog Homes designs, manufactures, and builds energy efficient custom log homes, log cabins, timber frame houses, and hybrids. In addition to model homes at its national headquarters in Moss, Tennessee, the family-owned business maintains show homes and sales centers in the Tennessee cities of Cookville, Crossville, and Murfreesboro. Honest Dave has been in continuous operation for 36 years. Since 1979, Honest Dave has created approximately 7,000 homes for customers across North America, in the Far East, and in other locations around the globe. An extensive network of more than 50 independent dealers located throughout the United States services clients worldwide. Our speaker this evening is Honest Abe Blog Homes Vice President, Jeff Clements. Jeff assists and guides the Honest Abe sales team and dealer network in providing the services and products that Honest Abe customers need. Jeff grew up within a few miles of Honest Abe's national headquarters and returned to the region after graduating college to make his home and raise his family. Six years after fulfilling his lifetime dream of building and owning an Honest Day blog home, Jeff went to work for the company. He now has a 15-year history with Honest Abe and is credited with building the company's extensive national dealership network. He and his wife, Lisa, have raised three children in their log home, and Jeff has guided hundreds of homeowners through the process of having their home as well. Before we get started, I wanted to also let you know that we will save time at the end of the event to answer questions. Questions can be submitted in the question panel on the right throughout the presentation. Jeff, I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Amanda. I appreciate everybody joining us tonight. It's an honor to be with you. Uh, and as Amanda said, I, I do live in a log home uh, just down the road from where, where I'm sitting right now. I actually ate supper there just a few minutes ago. So for you that haven't eaten tonight, uh, maybe I'll, I'll, you know, maybe you can wait just a few more minutes. Um, when we built this home several years ago, I, I served as my own general contractor uh, on that home. And, um, and, and Samantha said, we bought that home before I went to work with, with, with the company. Uh, log home or wood home enthusiasts, we're a unique breed. I put myself in that category. I've always enjoyed um, a lot of things that had to do with the good old days. And, and you know, it makes me think of simpler times. Uh, when I was young, I used to like to watch the shows Gunsmoke and Bonanza, and one of my early memories that was ingrained in me that I think made me really start wanting a log home was watching the show Bonanza and seeing the Cartwrights there in their log, in their log home that was uh, there, the center of their life on, on the Ponderosa. So that was sort of my beginning uh, of of wanting and thinking about a log home, and I'm sure most of you listening have got sort of that same, uh, a same distinct, unique story that that uh, that you know sparked that, uh, made that spark that made you interested in these type homes, and 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 make you want to to find your forever home in the in a log or timber frame home. Uh, I'd like to give a quick overview of, of what we'll be covering tonight. First, I'll give some tips on researching these homes. I'll, I'll give some advice on choosing a company, uh, discussing property selection and preparation. We'll review budgeting and financing, designing your home, constructing, and decorating. And uh, I'd like to show several ways, several common ways to, to research. Local events, open houses, visiting model homes, magazines, including log home magazines. And, and I would like to, uh, to mention uh, log home living, country's best cabins, and the timber home living. Uh, I appreciate them co-sponsoring this with us tonight. I would also like to encourage you, if you have not subscribed to these magazines, they're a great source of, of um, ideas and inspiration for you in your research phase. Um, also, log home shows and, and, and regular home shows. Many of us in this industry participate in those shows. Uh, and of course, the internet, which wasn't around when my, me and my wife Lisa were, were uh, researching log homes. 
One thing that I mentioned, we see many customers come to us that uh, have a binder full of photos, articles, questions, and ideas. Sometimes that, that file will be tattered and torn and well used, but if, if keeping a binder like that, it fits your style of collecting data and research, I would encourage you to do, do that. They may pull out a picture that says, here's a picture of what we want our great room to look like. Here's, here's what we like the kitchen to look like. Here's, here's the type of kitchen cabinets we like. Uh, so I encourage you to keep a binder with photos, articles, and, and your questions and ideas. As you move forward in, in your pursuit of your dream home, there will come a time when you will need to pick a log or timber frame company. I'll discuss some good things to do in your, your quest as you're going down this journey and, and choosing the right company. Most companies, uh, including us, we have home tours and special events. Um, when Lisa and I were researching, um, I heard about a tour of homes that, that Honest Abe was having up the road. Um, as, as our family was growing, Lisa and I, we were, we were needing to think seriously about building a house. Now Lisa, she was more interested in a commissional style house, more like what everybody else was building. Um, she didn't know how badly I wanted to log home until this tour came up and I started talking about, about that and, and talked her into going on this tour of homes. She thought at least she would get some decorating ideas and things like that to, to put in her new conventional home. But once we got in those homes, we got to talk to those customers, hear their stories, uh, hear how passionate they were. We, I think that convinced Lisa to, uh, to sort of join in and, and, and uh, in, in her dream now of, of uh, moving towards owning, owning a log home. Uh, this type of event that Lisa and I attended 24, 25 years ago is still very prevalent today, so I encourage you to do those. Um, attend a log raising demonstration or open houses. Again, I encourage you to get inside the houses of uh, of these homeowners and ask questions. The log raising demonstration, the picture there on, on the right is, uh, is of, our, as of our log raising demonstration where we'll build a small structure. Uh, we'll stack a few courses of logs, show you that process. We'll put the, uh, build the loft, um, build the roof, and take you through that whole process. We can do that in roughly two hours on this small structure and it really gives people a good idea of how these these homes go together. Um, so I, I really encourage you to do, to do that. Um, next, I encourage you to uh, visit sales models and, and the manufacturing facilities of, of these companies. Uh, Honest Abe, we have four sales models as, as Amanda mentioned earlier. Uh, a neat thing about our sales models is one of them is 34 years old. Our company's been in existence for 36, so one of those is almost as old as the company. However, on the other end of the spectrum, we have one that's less than a year old. So uh, those sales models, we have de uh, a dealer network throughout the country, and some of those have sales models that are open to the public. Also, um, the manufacturing facilities. Our industry is proud of of how we prepare and, and package uh, and, and meal uh, these, these engineered systems. So we're proud to show our manufacturing facilities. So I would encourage you to, to do that. Schedule a visit. Meet with designers. Uh, most of our industry has an in-house design team or the, either they, they contract out to a other design team, but um, designing your home is a, is a, a very, uh, it's a very, can be a very fun process and can be a very creative process. So you want to know if the design team, are they skilled and creative? Are they accessible to, to meet and discuss design ideas with you? I would encourage you to visit construction sites. Um, what do the builders say? What do they say about the quality of the, the home? So, you know, ask the companies where they've got some 
homes under construction and see if you can schedule a visit to go out and, and, and see these logger timber frame uh, homes being built. Again, our companies, not just us, but other companies in the industry, we're proud of our systems and how they work and how they're supposed to work in, in the building process, how they go together. So we would like you to see that. Uh, see what your impression is of the, the quality of the materials. Another good thing is to talk to past customers. I encourage you to, uh, to talk with customers that maybe, maybe find some that have lived in their home for several years and then find someone that is, is built more recently. Ask them how, what they like about their homes. Ask them what they would change about their homes. Ask them in the process of buying and building this home what challenges they overcame and how those challenges were handled with the company. So that, that's, that's really good. Again, talk to these customers. It's neat to hear their stories also. Um, I still think overall uh, people buy from people. So as um, you know, you want to get confidence in the company and in these visits you want to get confidence in the people. So if you will go and, and do some of these things and, and and do these visits, I think you know you either you either gain a confidence in the company and it, it's people that will be able to satisfy your your uh, your needs, or you will decide that you need to look elsewhere. So I encourage you to do these things. Uh, let's move on to uh, discuss a little bit about property. Now, this piece of property on the screen there, uh, that's not my house. That's not not where I live, but it is indicative of the places people build these type homes. Uh, we see them being built in remote locations many times. We, it's often commented that uh, we don't see lots of these logger timber frame homes as we're driving down the road, and there's a good reason. Uh, they, they may be up in the woods. They, they may be out on the farm. They may be on the lake where the only people that may see the, the the house is actually if you're on a boat out on the lake looking back at the house. And also there are communities that, that have many of the logger timber frame or, or rustic wood homes in them. Uh, no, matter, no matter where you build, um, you know, you want that place to be special for your special home. When I was about 14 years old, I knew where I wanted to build my home and it was up in the woods, it was through the field up in the woods where I'd ridden horses many times. It's actually in the woods where it was a really good place to squirrel hunt when I was growing up. And I, I was up there one day on the horse and I just realized that, hey, this is a place I wanna, I wanna build my house. And I think most of you will connect with that feeling of, of finding that perfect piece of property. I was fortunate that my mom and dad just told told uh, Lisa and I to just go pick out a place on the farm where we wanted to uh, to build and they deeded us that property so that was uh, that was an easy way for us to get started on the property deal. Uh, some co considerations for selecting property. You want to confirm access to your utilities and services and uh, if you don't have access you don't want you want to find out you know what's it going to cost to get it there. You want to determine your water source. Do you have municipal water or what are the wells in that area? Are they known to be good, good wells? What about sewer or septic, your waste disposal options? Uh, you want to research any restrictive covenants. Uh, for example, if you're building in one of those communities, does your community have a minimum square footage requirement? That's very important to know. I was just talking recently with a fellow that started his house um, and uh, he had to add on to it. He was building about a 1,400 square foot home and had to found out that he had to be at 1,800 square feet after he started building. So you want to find those things out up front. Explore zoning and environmental restrictions. You know, is your property in a floodplain, a flood zone? You know, you want to find that out. If it is, you you may have uh, issues with insurance and uh, financing. So, uh, and 
if, if you found that perfect piece of property, purchase, purchase that, uh, that land early. Banks are lacking um, land, again, as equity. And so if you can purchase that land, uh, you can go ahead and start building that equity. Uh, while we're talking about banks, it's a good time to, uh, to move on and talk about budget. If you don't know what your personal financial capacity is to, to build this home, um, I do know somebody that will tell you that, and that will be your banker. So you can, uh, if, if you don't know, just, just talk with them. They'll, they'll be for sure to let you know. But, uh, you know, what is the cost of your land purchase? Or do you already own that land? That's, that's such, a, such a big help if you already own that land and it's already bought and paid for. Your infrastructure development. Uh, what's it costing to get utilities and getting that that half mile driveway up to that remote log home, setting up in the woods? Site preparation. A flat piece of property that's easily accessible will be much more will be much less expensive than a home site that's say back hanging on the side of a cliff. Your design and size of house is is uh, is key in budget. Me, just because a house is large or small doesn't necessarily dictate the budget. The the design, for example, a a simple straight roof line will be more economical to build uh, than a complex roof systems with different different pitches and angles coming in at, at that's just uh, you know you can those are very uh, variations that will um, that will greatly impact your budget and then we talk about optional amenities and uh, you can have a small house that costs a lot more than a large house and it's all it's all related to amenities and I'll I'll borrow one of my buddies uh, analogies and to talk about amenities. He talks about uh, pickup trucks. You can go buy a pickup truck, a new one, for $20,000. Or you can go buy a new pickup truck for $75,000. They both have steering wheels. They both have four tires, four wheels, and you can both drive them and they'll get you where you're going. But what is the difference between the $20,000 pickup and the $75,000 pickup? And, and that's, that's amenities. One of the challenges we see many times with customers that come to us that are keeping that binder, that they've crammed it full with every idea and dream that they've ever had in, in, to put in this home, uh, is that when they get serious about starting to build, very few people have the financial capacity to do 100% of everything that they've ever dreamed of. So. I would encourage you if you find yourself in that boat that you know you've been collecting ideas for years and you this is exactly what you wanted and then you get down to it doesn't fit in your budget I would encourage you don't necessarily allow all these amenities to stall your dream there there's many amenities that can be delayed or deferred and uh, for example um, some of the extensive landscaping and this lake that you may see in front of this house, you know, that can be done later and doesn't impact your initial budget. The swimming pool that the dogs are enjoying there, that, that can be done later. It doesn't have to be done up front. Our outdoor living areas that we all like, uh, that can be added later without impacting your initial budget. In, in my personal example, Lisa and I had all, you know, we had designed all these porches on our home. When we got down to trying to build it for what we needed to build it for, we had to leave off lots of those porches. So we only had a front porch. So a few years later, we we added the back porch, and and that was just the way that we were able to build the square footage, the 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 home that we wanted. We deferred that amenity, and uh, and we're still able to move forward. Another another place uh, is a basement. Um, Basements are cheap square footage, uh, and and you can you can build basements uh, 
and, and finish them later. And that's what we did. We finished rooms later. We uh, most companies offer log siding, which will match the profile of the logs. So we go on the inside of those uh, the concrete, and we we put up the the, uh, the wood siding. So when you walk into the basement, you still feel like you're in a a log home. We've still got some we've got some timber accents down there. Those are good good things, good areas that you can defer uh, some of these amenities that cost so much up, up front. Let's talk a little bit about design and, and what do you want your home to, to, to look like. Do you want it chinked or not chinked? You like square, round, or D-logs? You like a timber frame or hybrid home which um, combines many of the the building systems together. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to plan for discussion uh, before you meet with a designer and uh, making the best use of your idea binder. So as we as we go forward, um, we a lot of people come to us and they they are uncertain what kind of log profile they like. So the log profile, what the log looks like. Uh, one of the first questions I'll ask them is, do you like chinking? Or do you not like chinking? So you, the picture on the left is a chinked house. So you see the the the, the stripes there, if you will, uh, on that dovetail log system. That's an Appalachian uh, style home. That's uh, a, a lot of people that like that profile. They love that chinking and they like that profile. While others, that is just not what they want. So. You know, that's where I start out with when they're trying to narrow down. I ask that question: Do you like chinking or not? They usually either love it or hate it. Do you like a square log? There's another good square log picture with the chinking in between. Or do you like the round log? You see the round timbers on that front porch, and it's got the round logs back behind there. Um, and then sometimes we have spouses that disagree. One likes round log, and one likes square logs, so uh, I think this that's why this log profile is so popular, uh, the D-log. Uh, the D-log combines the round outside with the flat square inside. Uh, and then the other option we talked about the, the timber frame. So you've got the post and beam uh, that make up the structural part of the exterior walls and, and you see this house that's not anywhere near finished, but that gives you an idea of the skeleton of that timber frame home. A great option with the timber frame homes are that you can pretty much do any exterior you choose, from brick to stone to wood sidings. You can do combinations. You can make it look like a hybrid home. A few years ago, uh, there was a, a pretty large timber frame project we were involved in that it was entirely brick on the outside. So from the outside it, it fit in with the rest of the neighborhood but on the inside it was a very uh, very unique home. Some, some of these design decisions are practical, some are aesthetic, and some are both. For example, staircases, doors, windows, exposed timbers, trim, flooring, fireplaces, cabinetry, heating and cooling, porches and decks, storage spaces, basement, garages, corner systems, stains and sealers, and lighting. Um, as I said, some of these are very practical and some are, are, are more aesthetic. And, and However, most of them are both. Uh, a good example are porches and decks. Porches and decks uh, are both aesthetic and practical. Not only do they look good, and they're just a natural fit with these type of homes, and it's like you got to have porches, but uh, they're very practical, and they expand your outdoor living space. Um, they protect your home from the weather, and they keep your home cooler in the summer. We have many customers that have as much or more square footage in porch than they as they do on the other part of the house, the part where you live on the inside. So I think that says a lot about the personality of the homeowners is they they really like uh, 
being outdoors. And, and so porches are great for that. You see that uh, that picture there? Uh, yes, that is a porch. That is a screened-in porch. And uh, I just want to notice a, a little, notice the accents on, on the timbers there in the ceiling, the, the, the different stain color. That's very popular. But that, that home is sitting on a, a lake there, and they get to enjoy many, many meals and many good times out there on that, on that screened-in porch. Corner systems, they're pretty much aesthetic. And I think a lot of people maybe think that they're more, uh, you think more practical when you're thinking about the corner systems. But most companies, including us, have developed all these corner systems that we have to perform well. Um, to say one is better than another is, is probably not, necess not necessarily accurate. When customers are trying to choose between corner systems, I usually recommend they go with the one they like the looks of the best. You know, when you thought about this log home and what it looks like, what do you see? Do you see, do you see a dovetail, square log? Do you see an interlocking, uh, do you see a button pass uh, corner system? Uh, that's like on that D log. Uh, the interlocking corner, which resembles the, the old Lincoln logs, and, uh, uh, or saddle notch. These are just four systems that uh, there are a lot of, uh, lot of varying uh, corners that, that are so, sort of similar to these. These are sort of the, four of the main ones that much of the industry shares. So uh, I just thought I'd, I'd mention, mention those. Let's talk a little bit about some interior things. Uh, aesthetically, the set of spiral stairs you see in that great room really opens up the, the, the room and the feel of the room. So that's, it's very aesthetic. However, if you, you, if you plan on using that upstairs a lot, you, you got to wonder how practical those stairs are. You know, if it's, uh, if it's only used once every time you have the grandkids visiting and they're going up in the upstairs loft to sleep, then, you know, they may be fine. But if you're, if you're up and down those every day, you know, just wonder how practical they are. Uh, the stone in that in the the bar there, the island, um, you know that's not totally necessary. So so it's aesthetic. You could you could build that out of lots of other materials, other materials that may not cost as much. But you know what you can't see is in that great room, uh, the fireplace is is built out of that same stone. So it's very very pleasing to the eye. Some other things to look look at here, uh, the great room there on the, on the left, uh, the customers apparently wanted an open look with the ceiling and the exposed timbers. You can tell they also love wood. Uh, for interior looks, you've got many options. You, uh, you don't have to have all this wood unless you want it, but for, for some of it, us, it's exactly what you do want. So uh, the picture on the right, you can see the owners probably put more emphasis on the fireplace rather than the TV and entertainment center. Uh, you notice the uh, chandeliers, the picture on the right and the picture on the left. You got the uh, the antler chandeliers on the left, and then the the, the more uh, conventional lighting on the right. It both goes well in both these these homes. Some more pictures uh, here, great rooms. The, uh, the great room picture on the left has many appealing feature, features there. Uh, you definitely notice the fireplace. You notice the, the, the glass, that, uh, that triangular glass there, and the knotty wood floors. Uh, the picture on the right has just as impressive fireplace and the same open concept as the first picture. But notice the different look and feel that having different windows gives you. The, the picture on the right has more traditional window, windows a, as opposed to the just uh, the wide open window look there. So uh, there again, look on the right, the, the, the timbers in the ceiling there, the ones that have the colored accents as opposed to the one on the left. So lots of options here. You have the tile floor on the right versus the, the wood floors on the left. 
lot, a lot of good things you can do in, in a similar looking room to make it very unique for you. You know the room on the left, uh, we finally show a little bit of drywall. You, you see the, uh, the light green uh, bit of drywall there. Um, these homes are so versatile you can, uh, most people usually use some drywall in their homes and that's okay. Uh, or you don't have to, totally up to you. Uh, it's a great office up there on the top right picture. Then I wanted to uh, point out in the, the kitchen below, uh, notice the track lighting and, and the light fixtures. Uh, these, these homes no longer have to be dark uh, with all the window and with all the, uh, the, the light options that are, that are available out there. Uh, also, the bar down there in the kitchen with the with the wood panels that match the the other cabinets. Uh, see, I, if you remember the picture earlier with the uh, the stone uh, bar there, you, you can if you remember the difference. So, uh, we've seen uh, we've seen several pictures with mostly wood interiors, but uh, never fear for you people that love drywall. Here's, here's some pictures inside log homes with drywall. You see the upper left bedroom picture with that uh, that gable dormer out there with the uh, with the, the red drywall in there. That just gives a whole different feel to that room. Uh, many people like that variation. And then you can see, hey, there's a bathroom. I, that that may be finished in in the basement. Um, I'm not sure, and the, the picture on the, the bottom left is in the basement, and, and there's another bedroom with some drywall in there. So for you people that like, you know, changing up color, like my daughter's bedroom has been painted and wallpapered 17, seven times, I know at least, in 23 years. Right, Lisa? Uh, anyway. Uh, so anyway, if you like to be able to change, you know, put a little drywall in there. Uh, and here's a sort of a combination. We call this a, a more a sunroom. It's an octagon look, fireplace. Just look, look what you can do with the with the windows and and the fireplace. Uh, this this fireplace is is a uh, uh, is not a, a, a true functional uh, wood fireplace. It, it's it's a gas fireplace. It used ventless, but it allows you not to have to put the the chimney all the way off the top. But look at the great look it gives you on the inside. Now, designing your home can be the fun part, and I say it can be the fun part if if you uh, let let your wife just totally take over this part of the home. Uh, happy wife means happy life. Let her design it. So. Uh, the plans that most companies show are usually just idea starters. Uh, typically, floor plans or designs or layouts are customizable for, for each homeowner's desires and needs. That's what we're used to. We say custom is standard. Um, you know, most customers early in the process have several things to decide, like as we talked about, what log profile to use um, and, and, and other things. but some ideas to get to get ready to discuss what kind of what you want your house to look like with a designer is um, you know of course the log profile uh, is my home totally custom or does the company have a plan that's pretty close to what I'm looking for are there local building codes that dictate some design features for example if you live in the mountains of Colorado you may have a you may get lots of snow and have a heavy snow load. So you want to, you would need to beef up those rafters to carry that snow load. That's very important to know. The designers need to know that, that local condition. Does the company charge extra for, for custom plans? Uh, you need to think, have in mind, what size home do you require? When you're doing your research, you're going out and visiting past customers, you're going to events, you're going to open houses, Hey, I encourage you to take a tape measure with you. If you get in a room and say, hey, I like this room. This is the perfect size. Measure that room and, and take a picture of that room. Put it in your, your idea folder. Uh, we see that done several times. 
think about single story or multiple floors. I think in our home, as Lisa and I, as, as we get older, that's we start thinking that, hey, maybe we should have just built uh, one floor over the basement instead of two floors over the basement. Uh, interior walls in, in most log and timber frame homes are, are not load bearing. That means that you can basically move these walls anywhere. So in the example of our house, Lisa found a plan that she liked that Honest Abe had. But she didn't particularly like the interior layout. So she was able to move those walls inside to, to, to meet her demand. So that is a great thing about log and timber frame homes. You can, you can typically move the interior walls pretty much any way you want to. Uh, you think about how much porch and outdoor living area. Um, your foundations, there's all kinds of, uh, of different options out there. And we're always asked, um, do you have to have a special foundation for these log homes? And the answer is no. So you pretty much any um, foundation contractor can, can put in any of these foundations. We actually provide the foundation plan that is given to the foundation contractor, and then they they would they would design the foundation uh, by our plans. Uh, I want to mention an item or two that's that's typically um, that's typically uh, sorry uh, we have a little trouble with sometimes with customers not allowing enough room for stairs in their house. So. I just caution you that as you're thinking about that, you need to allow plenty of room for stairs. We see that over and over. Uh, as I said, designing your house can be the fun part. Now that you've researched the, the companies, uh, you found the people you got confidence in uh, that you want to do business with, you, got, you have to remember this is one of the largest purchases that you may ever make. And this is your forever home. And you want to make sure you're dealing with people and the company that, that, that you've got confidence in. So now that you've got who that is and you're ready to move forward, you, you're ready to go to contract. So lock home manufacturers do have contracts and that simply outlines the detailed terms between the homeowner and the manufacturer. It initiates the final design and the milling of a home and it allows everyone to start working towards a delivery date. Um, at this point, your home usually gets put on the manufacturing schedule, foundations are being built, and the homeowner looks forward to that big day, the, the day that, that that log home or timber frame home that you've been waiting for arrives. So uh, now it's time to get building. We're, we're asked many times, where do you find a log or timber home builder? Uh, you know, they're, they're we don't see that many of these type homes being built in our area. <clears throat> Most companies will have a list of, of people that are in this business to build log homes. Um, I would I would encourage you to to take that list and 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 don't just go just don't pick the builder based on uh, just ba based on anyone's recommendation. Check them out for yourself. Uh, Ask them for past customers, both uh, a few years ago and, and, and more recent. Uh, visit them. Find out if, you know, I guess ultimately find out if you had to build a home, would you use that builder again? If the answer is yes, uh, I think I would probably feel pretty good about, about uh, moving forward. If, if they have trouble telling you yes, um, you know, that might mean that you want to keep, keep shopping. Uh, some things to expect, you know, you want to think about what to expect during the construction phase and, and how long does it take. Typically, the log walls go up pretty fast in a log house. They're, they're, they're stacked pretty fast. The log, the log walls with all your insulating value there that you don't have to go back and, and put in insulation in between the walls and things like that. So. Uh, you know, construction involves several important phases. Uh, of course, starting with that foundation we talked about, erecting the logs, uh, going on through, and you hear in the industry 
uh, you hear the term called dried in a lot. Um, and as we move forward here, this home is almost complete. This is to the dried in stage. Uh, the roof is on, the windows and doors are in, uh, the house is ready to be finished on the inside and do landscaping and uh, and, and, and all that stuff. So uh, you hear that term dried in a lot in, in our industry. Um, you know, you're, you've got your home built, uh, you know, welcome home. This is the home that you've been dreaming of. It's, it's, uh, you've got it built. It's time to start decorating, landscaping. And then, uh, if you've, if you deferred any of those amenities, it's not too soon to start planning, uh, of, of your next expansion where you're adding on, uh, the, that, that porch that you didn't get to build right off the bat, finishing a room in the basement. All that, so uh, you know, this is where your forever begins. So, I wanted to mention uh, some some important takeaways. I think from from tonight, uh, five big big takeaways, and we're going to be we're going to talk about the bees. Uh, research. We talked about that. Be adventurous. Uh, attend events. Don't be afraid to talk to salespeople like me. Uh, don't be afraid to talk to the homeowners and builders. Most of us and the company, the industry is full of, of companies that have been in business for a long time and have people that have lots of experience. Uh, we, we are nice people. We, we, we want to help you. That's what we're, that's what we're here for. So don't be afraid to talk to us. So, so go out there and, and, and do your research and, and visit and talk and, and, and talk some more. On the property, be persistent. Don't give up on finding that perfect home site. Many times we see people have their home designed. Uh, pretty much they know the type of home they want. They've already got it designed, but they don't have the property for it to go on. And as soon as they find that property, they're ready to start building. So be persistent and, and find that piece of property that you that you saw in your mind that this home would be setting. On your budget, be realistic. We all have limitations, and remember, don't let a few of these amenities that you're really wanting just wreck your entire dream of, of, of log or wood home ownership. And, and on the design part, be creative, and creativity doesn't start and stop with the floor plan. So if you find a standard plan that's, that a company has and, and you build that standard plan, that doesn't mean that you're not creative. There are endless decorating and landscaping ways to make your home as unique as any of the most custom homes out there. Um, and then on the construction part, be thorough. Talk with multiple builders and homeowners. Go and see the work. And if you, if they gain your confidence, I, I, you know, I would feel good. We, as I said, people buy from people, and and if you. If someone has your confidence, it's it's so much easier to uh, to put that trust in them and and, and do business with them. So um, I hope uh, I hope I said a little something that may have helped you. There's the house where I ate supper a few minutes ago before I started this. I almost ate too much, but uh, that that's uh, that's uh, Lisa's house. She lets me live there, and and uh, and but anyway, but. I, I hope I helped you. I hope you enjoy your your quest for log home ownership or timber timber uh, frame ownership. Uh, it it gives you a lifestyle that if you're a true log, we call them loggies or timber frame person, you're just not satisfied unless you live in these type homes. So, thanks again. I'm going to turn it back over to Amanda for any questions that anyone may have. Thank you. Thank you for a great presentation, Jeff. We really appreciate it. We are going to take some time now to answer your questions. And as I said earlier, there is a question panel in the, um, or a question tab, I should say, in the control panel that you'll find usually on the right of your screen. So feel free to type in your questions there, and we'll try to get through what we can here this evening. 
So Jeff, the first question I have here is, the builder I am leaning towards has ne never built a log home. Is that a problem? It doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, I, I've seen many times that uh, good builders are good builders. A, a, a builder that cares about their work, uh, they will do a good job. Uh, there's many companies, just like we're part of the Log Homes Council. And being part of the Log Homes Council means that we will have a construction manual that is has detailed, easily read pictures that, that actually shows uh, shows builders how to build. We also have construction schools and seminars. But you know, there are builders that have been building homes for years that that build poorly. And then there are builders that don't have lots of experience, but because they care about their work and they're going to do it right, that just because they don't have experience uh, building these type homes, uh, I would be more concerned about the, the character and, and the, the quality that they, they put into uh, every job they do, more, more so than experience. Experience is nice, though. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, another question here. What issues have you had with the exterior maintenance of your home, especially with carpenter bees? Yes, um, car carpenter bees can be uh, can be an issue. They uh, they they like to be active a couple of times during the year. We we found uh, we found a couple of things that seem really to to help with with carpenter bees. One, uh, they make different top coats that go over the, the, the stain. And a little bit of a glossy feel to that top coat greatly deters these carpenter bees. They can't get traction very well uh, on the logs or the wood to, uh, to start boring. Uh, a problem with carpenter bees is they don't ingest the wood, they just chew it up. And so you can't put really much on there that will will kill the, the carpenter bees if they eat it because they don't ingest the wood. However, there is a product uh, that we've tried. This is the second year. Um, and if you will do this, and as a general rule, when you start seeing a few carpenter bees, it's usually this time of year. In, in our part of the country, it's usually late April and May. They're very active in that part of the time of the year. But if you will spray your eaves, uh, your overhangs, and those horizontal porch members with, uh, there's a product called Demon, and uh, it's it's available at most farm supply stores, and you can you can probably spray that once or twice. It doesn't take very long, and and it's pretty much deterring those bees for the year. But you know you do need to keep an eye on them. Don't let them overtake your house. They like to stay where they are. You want to make it where uh, you, you don't want to make it where these uh, bees just want to stay there. Yeah. There are also right. permachine, Sasco, other companies have some uh, dust insecticides that you put in the hose and then you, you, you plug the hose up. So, yeah. Need to pay attention, but don't let it, you know, it, it's, if, if you pay a little attention, you can, uh, you'll, you'll have no issues. Wonderful. Thanks, Jeff. Would it be more economical for me to just choose the closest company to where I plan to build? Not necessarily. That's a good question. Um, you know, this is one of the more important purchases that, that you're going to make. And I think you need to research. You need to find the company and the people that you have confidence in that can can take care of, of the product and take care of the customer service uh, the way that you want it taken care of. If that if that company is across the country, uh, that's probably who you need to deal with. Uh, there there are many good companies across across the country, and I think many times it boils down to maybe a uh, the local person that that the local contractor that may be building sometimes and who they like dealing with sometimes some you know or maybe the local dealer um, so I don't think it's necessary you have to uh, deal with the closest person to you it's not always the most economical good quality materials uh, they they know no boundaries so 
All right, wonderful. Before we get too far away from the bees, um, could you spell the name of the spray you just mentioned in your previous answer? Yeah, I think it's just Demon, D-E-M-O-N. I'm sorry about my Tennessee accent. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, I, will, I will verify that. I can put my hands maybe on some, just uh, one second. Yeah, it's Demon, D-E-M-O-N, W-P. All right, thank you, Jeff. Um, okay, so are you happy with the metal roofing on your home? I see many different types of roofing on log and timber homes, but really like the look and sound of metal. Any thoughts yes. on that? Yes, I, yeah, I like, I like that metal roof. We had shingles first, and uh, we live in a wooded area, and I think uh, the – you know, many times the roofs don't dry out as quick up in the woods. Uh, the sun doesn't hit all the areas. And I think that uh, can make your shingles uh, deteriorate quicker. So, uh, uh, yeah, we we put metal over our shingles. Initially, we had shingles. And uh, we ended up going with metal. We, we really like it. It's just been no trouble at all. Uh, Yes, you like the sound. Now, if you're in one of those heavy timber roof systems with the big built-up insulated panels, it's harder to hear the, the pitter-patter of the rain on that roof, but sometimes you can step out on the porch, and that's where you can hear it. But, yeah, I love the metal. I wouldn't be surprised that half the homes that we see uh, of ours being built use metal roofs. Wonderful. Thank you. All right, next question. How hard is it to get financing for this type of home? Uh, some areas, uh, you know, occasionally people run into trouble just because the banks aren't familiar with it. Uh, there, there are companies, and and we can, you know, we know some of those that uh, that almost specialize in this type of uh, construction. You know, a good, a great place to start is with the people you know, uh, the the bank that you deal with on a weekly basis. Uh, are they are they up on these type homes and and are they willing to finance them? If they're not, uh, you know, let let uh, let us try to help you find those those companies that that are familiar with this. It it is slightly different, but it's uh, but there are a lot of companies out there wanting to lend monies on the, on these type homes. Thank you. Uh, what wood species is best for a log home? I'm sorry, Amanda, repeat. What wood species is best for a log home? Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, we, you know, we went through the process of using, in the early years, we used several species, uh, different species of wood. And we settled on uh, a particular species that we like, and, and I'm not going to say it's the best, but we think it's the best, but there are many, there are many companies that have been in business for a long time. And all us companies, we don't like having trouble. So we all have good species of wood. If the company has been around a long time, I would say the species that they're using is very good. Now, I'll plug what we use. Uh, we use eastern white pine. And we use it because it's very stable. Uh, it dries easily in our dry kilns. Uh, it... it um, it stays put, as I said. It, it's very stable. It receives stain. It takes it takes the color of the stain very well. It's a very attractive. It's good to work with. Uh, on and on. So you know, there again, there are many good species. We like we like that one. We we've, we've tried several, and 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 we've been with this one for many years now. Wonderful. Well, that seems to be all the questions we have for this evening. We hope that you enjoyed the presentation. We will be sending out an email with a link to the recording of this event. So be watching your inboxes. That email will be coming out in the next 24 hours. On behalf of our sponsor, Honest Day Blog Homes and MyWoodHome.com, we would like to thank you all for joining us. Have a good night, everyone.